Hey everybody, it has been a long, long time since I put out a video on what we're doing in this Dunkirk Shale project, but uh, that comes to an end now. Um, so I got a new video I put together there. This has actually stuff that we did back at the uh, end of July and early August. So that's how long it's been since I've put something out there. But uh, we haven't been idle. We've been actually been really busy. Um, this is actually December now when I'm recording this little part of it. But we've uh, been out in the field a few more times. We still have some places we'd like to hit. If, you know, we can get some good days here and there over the winter, we'll probably get out and hit a couple more creeks there if we can in the cold. But um, for now, it's a lot of processing what we have, um, getting those samples off to the lab, getting them analyzed. And I'm starting to interpret that data, which is often, you know, sort of the uh, historical use of wintertime weather anyway. So that's a lot of it. But for the meantime, though, uh, I hope you enjoy this video. I got some um, work that we did out on some of the creeks up there in New York and then a uh, surprise visit from Ashley and doing some stuff in the lab so enjoy that. All right everybody back out in the field here we're actually on another creek over from the last video uh, Walnut Creek now we're on Silver Creek um, so and what we're standing on here is actually the Pipe Creek Shale so um, Last time we were on the Pipe Creek in Walnut Creek in the town of Silver Creek and uh, this time we're on the Pipe Creek and on Silver Creek in the town of Silver Creek. It's only slightly less confusing. <laughs> but uh, again, so this is the lower Kalwasser bed that we're on right here. We got to walk all the way up through the Hanover to get to the base of the Dunkirk. So it's going to be pretty similar to what we uh, saw last time, hopefully without getting attacked by bald eagles on this one. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to head up through there. We'll see you. After lengthy discussions, we have concluded that shale gravel banks is the most ideal to walk on. Dry, preferably wet's okay. Glacial erratics are not ideal. They get pretty slickery and hard to find footing on. And uh, smooth bedrock in the creek is just right out. That I've nearly ate it a number of times trying to walk on this stuff there. So uh, yeah, if you ever do any creek hiking, there's your uh, bit of advice from uh, Scott and randy's trials of the day big old chunk that just fell down not too long ago that's why we avoid walking underneath these cliffs we're at the contact so we're trying to find a spot where you know this couple feet of dunkirk are actually in the creek floor so that we can get a good platform to core off of and uh Hopefully we'll get something up around this bend. Okay, we might have to just set up in the middle of the creek. Oh yeah. Something looks promising up there. Might be cement though. Might be an old piece of a bridge, I can't tell. Here's the Kalwasser right there, coming up through gray shales. There's a thin black shale here. Um, there's another one in there, it's kind of obscured. Here's this black shale, which should have pyrite at the bottom of it. I think I can see some on the bottom here. Gray shale and then the true base of the Dunkirk right there. So this is the interval we want. Just gotta find the ideal spot to core it. This is a pop-up right here. So what happens is you have the contemporary stress fields kind of east-northeast oriented 
and uh, we're kind of in the morning, the sun's sort of that way, so that's the orientation, and it's being compressed by the spreading of the mid-ocean ridge, the pole to which is Iceland, and um, so that creates this present-day east-northeast directed um, stress on these rocks, so as these creeks erode down and unload, the overburden stress holding the rocks in place, you get these pop-ups like that, and that's what you're seeing with these angled rocks right here. Nice big joint face right there. Pretty little waterfall. Found a nice platform here. We're, I don't know, probably a foot and a half, two feet or so up above the interval we're interested in. You can actually see there's some gray shale right down there in the creek bed. So we're gonna cut these cores on this platform. Um, at Walnut, we noticed, we noticed that um, where we cored, actually the black shale didn't seem to have the pyrite at the base of it and the intervening gray shale was a lot thinner. And when we moved down the wall, that gray shale was thicker and the black shale had the pyrite at the base of it, which makes sense if you have these like kind of bathymetric lows, that pyrite's gonna accumulate as a gravel in those lows, which means you also have more accommodation space for sediment. So I think our plan here is we're gonna cut a core like in this spot evaluate that black shale and whether or not it has the pyrite because we know it does down in the wall we've seen it so we want to see if we catch it in the core and if we don't we'll probably move up and down this platform and see if we can catch it somewhere else I, i'm not entirely sure what scott's doing right now but whatever it is i wouldn't recommend doing it <laughs> what core damn it <laughs> right on <laughs> actually we're trying to dry it off we got it wet because someone who will Remain unnamed, accidentally dumped a bunch of water onto the foil and <laughs> Gay won't remain unnamed. Thanks for having my back. <laughs> we're professionals out here to the end. So we're I was just looking at this and we were talking about it a little bit earlier. See how these beds are ever so slightly dipping down into the bank? And if you keep following this up, it becomes a little bit more apparent and then Right there, you can see my finger making it blurry, but you got beds that are dipping that way and beds that are dipping that way. So we're actually right here on the edge of a, of a pop-up in the middle of this stream. Well, that wraps up the field portion of, of the video here. So now let's check out and see what we do with these cores once we get them back to the lab, which is also really just my garage. And you also get to see just like what a mess my garage is. But uh, I do apologize, but, um, I mean, give me a little credit. Most of what you're seeing in there is a lot of uh, rocks and stuff that I use to process rocks and fossils. So anyways, check out what we do here in the lab. What? Look who's here. <laughs> Finally, in person, at least for me. I mean, she's still just on the screen for you. But I haven't seen her in person since like March when I was down in Texas. But she's up here now. And we are in the lab, which is also known as my garage. And uh, we are getting ready to cut up this here core right here. And uh, so that's what we're going to do. We're in the process of marking this off right now at the intervals that we want to cut it at. And then we're going to get it over to the saw and cut it up and start getting the stuff labeled and processed so we can start getting some new data. So that's what we're going to do now. Let's do it. Okay, so Randy is marking up the core. This is the Rosebrook core um, so that he can cut it at the increments that we want. He's trying to get centimeter cores. Um, so he can cut the pucks at that length and then we're going to mark them at the midpoint. So yeah, once, once he scores them, then he's going to go over and cut them and he's trying to make sure that he gets the same lithology um, within the pucks. So for instance, there's a black shale kind of in the middle. We use that as our um, starting point for marking everything. Um, so that all that black shale is in within is within the same puck. Fashion at its <laughs> finest right here. I don't know if you can hear us or not. We have ear protection on, so it may just be mute. <laughs>
right, so we cut up this segment of the core right here um, in roughly one centimeter intervals. We wanted to make sure we grouped lithology, so some of these are actually a little bit smaller than one um, centimeter here. But uh, yeah, here we go for this core. Here's all the pucks we've cut through here. Um, we're going to do some more cutting, and then we're going to have to get to uh, disaggregating these, and that'll be not fun, but fun. So that's next. So we got these cut into pucks. Ashley's drying them off so that we don't ruin our labels. Get them there. Then we'll start breaking them up. Ashley, you want to explain to the good people what you're doing here? I am making new um, little bags for the SEM portion of what we're going to break because we want to make sure that we preserve a section of it um, so that we can do some SEM analysis and see what's what's going on um, in detail in the rocks that nice. we need XRF on. Hey Ashley, you want to do that all over again because I cut your head off for the whole video? <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, yes, so I am uh, labeling these little bags um, identical to the ones that we've already made but with an S for SEM because we're going to keep a chunk of each one of these so we can do SEM analysis on the same pucks that we get XRF on. Cool. And did, was there any chance I like completely never even considered that and would have just ground all these up without thinking about it? <laughs> you mean I brought value to that? <laughs> yes. Been a while, didn't want you to think we were slacking here. We got the second core is almost cut up we got a rubble eye zone we got to deal with here and that slows us down but ashley's making more labels we've measured it out on our preserved core over there so we know how much uh, section is in this rubble eye zone so she's filling out those sample bags here just took a photo of these so that we know what we have here and then i'm going to bag these up to give her some more room all right well that's the whole core cut up yay, yay. it's exciting we got um a lot of samples out of this like 150 or something like that we cut it up at one centimeter intervals so kind of running out of time this took a while so now we're gonna um just bag these up and then i'll get to crushing them and disaggregating them before we send them off to get powderized but uh looking forward to uh, having some new samples to get a data set on soon well guys that's going to do it for this video i uh, hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching it and uh, we have some more from what we did out on 18 mile creek and like i said hopefully we'll get a chance to get out here in the winter but in the meantime we're going to be having lots of data rolling in processing that um you know you can catch us at a lot of conferences both virtual and in person we've been starting to present on a lot of this stuff um as those come up you know watch our linkedin pages and things like that our website um i have a link to it down here that'll show up there but uh check that stuff out if you want to keep track of what we're doing um hopefully we'll have some publications rolling out on some of this stuff at some point too so anyways again thanks so much for watching and following along with this project we really appreciate you have a good one. See ya.